Friday night is music night. Tonight, live from the Tower Ballroom in Blackpool, we present conductor Robin Stapleton, the BBC Concert Orchestra, leader Cynthia Fleming, guest singers Lindsay Hately and Glyn Kerslake, Alan Randall with his little ukulele, and Phil Kelsall with his mighty Wurlitzer, all here for your entertainment in a special seaside programme of music for everyone.
And with heels cracking like pistol shots there on Pascual Marquina's Spanish Gypsy Dance, we welcome you to Blackpool. With the lighting up of the illuminations only a couple of hours away, we are warming up the town now here at the uh, Tower Ballroom. This, of course, this magnificent opulent building was the, the venue for many years of come dancing. Ah, you remember come dancing, the slow fox trot, the quick step, the formation teams, formation dancing, the, the only known area of artistic endeavor for which Penge was a center of excellence. Ah. <laughs> And the faces and sounds have come dancing. Peter West, David Jacobs, Angela Rippon, even the sainted Wogan. And the voices of Ray Moore and Charles Nove describing acres of lurex and tulle. And how Deirdre is a stevedore by day and Geoffrey sat up all night hand sewing the sequins on his one piece. <laughs> well, if you just close your eyes, you might see them all as Robin Stapleton and the orchestra conjure up the haunted ballroom.
The Haunted Ballroom, a piece by one-time co-director of Sadler's Wells, Geoffrey Toy, which he wrote for the ballet of the same name, choreographed by Ninette de Valois. Well, the ghostly figures give way to real flesh and blood now as our guest singers take to the floor to swirl around. At first, a little suspicious of each other, then gradually allowing English reserve and Siamese formality to dissolve. Under the invitation, Shall We Dance? The classic sequence from The King and I, brought to life now by Lindsay Hately and Glyn Kerslake. From the Leono, called the English Governess at the Siamese Court, a fairly laborious title which was shortened for the play to become Anna and the King of Siam, and it was shaved further still, about as close as Yul Brynner's head was, for the musical The King and I. Well, Lindsay stays with us now. Oddly enough, she started a, a musical with a lengthy title, Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. And she's going to bring us a song now from a show which had originally an even more tortuous title. The title originally was It's a Funny Old World We Live In, But the World's Not Entirely to Blame. Luckily, Anthony Newley and Leslie Brickers tightened that up a bit to the good old bad old days. <laughs> Don't you realize we're living today? I'm happy to say it's the good old bad old days. Taking the breaks and making mistakes in the good old bad old days. Some people say they long for the old days to take them way back when. To me, you're either out or you're in. You lose or you win in this sad old latter day. Or are you rich? Who knows? Yeah.
Lindsay Hately with the good old Bad Old Days. By the way, Anthony Newley seemed uh, rather fond of rambling titles at that time. Another of his productions was called Will Hieronymus Merkin Ever Forget Mercy Hump and Find True Happiness? To which everybody replied, who cares? Will! Another question. Will Phil Kelsall step up to the mighty world at again and play for us? We do care about this, especially as he's going to pay tribute to his predecessor as resident organist here at the Tower Ballroom, the man who supervised the installation of this fine instrument behind me back in 1935, Mr. Blackpool himself, Reginald Dixon, who was here from 1930 till his retirement 40 years later. Tonight, this year, celebrating 25 years at the Tower himself, Phil Kelsall!
Phil Council's tribute to Reginald Dixon and more from Phil at the organ later. Now, earlier on, Glyn and Lindsay sang the song, Shall We Dance? That was also the title of a film of the 30s starring Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. And Glyn returns now to sing one of the songs that Fred introduced in that movie. Now, it said that uh, George Gershwin was playing over a melody for the score for the film when his brother, lyricist brother Ira, said to him, George, if you can give me two more notes in the first part, I can get the way you wear your hat. George did it. They both worked on, and this was the result. The way you wear your hat The way you sip your tea The memory of all that No, no, they can't take that away from me The way your smile just beams the way you sing of key, the way you haunt my dreams. No, no, they can't take that away from me. We may never, never meet again on that bumpy road to love. Still, I'll always, always keep the memory. Hold your knife The way we dance till free The way you change my life No, no, they can't take that away from me No, they can't take that away of key the way you haunt my dreams no no they can't take that away from me we may never never meet again on that bumpy road to love still I'll always always keep the memory of the way your knife the way we dance till free the way you change my life no no they can't take that away from me no they can't take that away they can't take that
Robin Stapleton and the BBC Concert Orchestra with music from another film starring Fred and Ginger, Top Hat. And is it possible to imagine a film stuffed full of better tunes than that? Strangely enough, it was not universally appreciated at the time. Graham Greene, no less, reviewed it for the newspapers and wrote that Astaire was like a human Mickey Mouse. Uh, the phrase hung heavily was also used, but you'll be relieved to learn that was only about the music. Now, something tells me that Blackpool audiences like a bit of sauce. Is this true? You, li you like a bit of, not smut, but something a bit on the edge. Something from the blue book, as Max Miller used to put it. Well, try this now. We have a master of the craft bringing to life a former master of the craft. The songs of George Formby, and let's have a nice warm Blackpool welcome for Alan Randall. <laughs> In the cleaning to earn a numbish bob. <laughs> For a nosy parker, it's an interesting job. Now it's a job just suits me to win the cleaner you would be. You can see what I can see when I'm cleaning windows. In my profession, I work hard, but I'll never stop. I'll climb that blinking ladder till I get right to the top. Pajamas lie side by side, ladies, night as I have spied. I've often seen what goes inside when I'm cleaning. In the windows, Mr. Wu now, oh Mr. Wu, what shall I do? I've got the kind of Chinese lime as long as it blues. That funny feeling keeps round me stealing. Oh, won't you throw your sweetheart over do? My vest's so short, now it won't fit my little brother. And my new Sunday shirt, it's got a perforated rudder, Mr. Wu. <laughs> what shall I do? I've got the kind of Chinese lime and Swansea blues. Waistcoat, Mr. Wu. <laughs> what shall I do? I've got the kind of Chinese line my swans with blues. Come on, sing this one. I'm leaning on the lamppost of the in case a certain little lady. Come on, sing up. Oh me. Oh my. Oh blimey. My old little lady. Champion. Now I don't know if she'll get the way she was 
and all is just the way anyway I know that you try Oh me Oh my I hope the little lady goes one and the gaga the dee boom boom there's no other girl I could wait for this one I pray can we pay for I won't have to ask what she's late for your turn she won't Wonderful, she's marvelous and beautiful, and everyone can understand why. I'm leaning on the lamppost in the corner of the street, case a certain little lady goes. It's turned out nice again, my hope. Uh, the great Alan Randall. And he'll be back a little bit later on with his uke, or more correctly, his ukulele banjo. Now, let's bring back Lindsay Hately, who, despite not having yet reached her 30th birthday, is a seasoned veteran of the West End. Her debut was at the age of 10 in Annie on stage. At 17, she was with the RSC in Stratford and on Broadway in Carrie. And she's seen many other productions, including those two and a half years as the narrator in Joseph that I mentioned earlier on. But she's not quite as active on the stage in recent years as uh, she's been, because not too long ago she had a major production of her own, delivering a baby daughter. But we are delighted she's found time to come to Blackpool tonight to deliver songs like this. David Shire and Richard Maltby's One Step. I took myself one step, one tentative, one step, and suddenly, wow, high light has stepped into my life. I never would try light, but look at me now. My world becomes splendid, unhappiness ending. The moment I flew, and I took myself one step, one high stepping, one step. I'm taking this one step. I won't stop with two. One of those days I spent in a haze. I mean, I was just moping around. And while I was moping, I happened to open a closet. And look what I found. A flat sort of ring. I'd been at the thing and pressed it. And suddenly, I've never been one for flipping my lid. But I gotta tell you the flip it I did. Now, I am not the type who goes putting on hats. I'm certainly not a girl who is hot to be laughed at in white time spats. But suddenly clear, a voice in my ear was starting to say to me, jerk, you don't have to sing, you don't have to dance, but nothing will happen till you take a chance. Splendid, my world become splendid.
Blue Tango in Blackpool would be even better, wouldn't it? We are here in Blackpool. Friday night is music night coming to you live from the Tower Ballroom in Blackpool on BBC Radio 2. And later this evening, Radio 2 will just pop up the road a little bit to Talbot Square for the Illuminations themselves, switching on tonight. And in that concert, you'll hear Westlife, Billy Piper and Paul Carrick. Catch it all on BBC Radio 2. Here in Blackpool, if you happen to be here, pop along and see it. And it will also be broadcast live on the net for the very first time at the BBC's own website, www.bbc.co.uk forward slash Radio 2. The best site in the world. Well, now, let's hear from Glyn Kerslake again. Glyn is, uh, like Lindsay, another youthful veteran of the West End stage with credits in Les Miserables and the original production of Miss Saigon to his name. He was the lead in Phantom of the Opera in 1998 as well. Now, though, he's going way back, back to when Jimmy Young was middle-aged. <laughs> and back to the 1930s, and uh, a song that didn't take off at first, but did grow to become a worldwide phenomenon. Not surprising, it was written by the great Cole Porter. <laughs>
Glenn Kerslake, beginning the begin. Now I'm going to tell you the tale of an artist who fell out of favor with the BBC. I'm not talking about Terry Wogan's autobiography. We are going back a little bit further, a controversial area. One of the songs you've actually heard this evening has been banned by the BBC. Now, I don't care. I mean, I'm, I'm too brave to let this bother me. I'm going to let you hear those offending lines again. I don't care. Honeymooning couples, too. You should see them, Bill and Coo. You'd be surprised at things they do when I'm cleaning windows. This, this was too much for the BBC. They seem to be the only people surprised at what honeymooning couples do back then in the 30s. And George Formby, yes, it was he. His record was taken off the air. It was only put back on the air when uh, it was pointed out that George had actually sung this song in front of Queen Mary. And Queen Mary had failed to faint dead away at the sound of it. <laughs> now, during World War II, George was a member of the Home Guard right here in Blackpool, from Thornton Cleveleys, I believe, alongside, strangely enough, none other than Reginald Dixon. And we're going back 60 years now to the days of the Battle of Britain and a bit more of that old Formby magic from Alan Randall. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, can you give me a B flat seven, please? A B flat. That's it. Just give me a B and I'll flatten it myself. You'll be all right. <laughs> now, is there anybody near us? Well, can anybody hear us? For I've got something important to say. Do I seem a little silly? Well, I am a little silly. <laughs> For I've not, not been feeling myself. You can say that again. <laughs> All day it's in the air This for me feeling everywhere That makes me sing without a care Today was I'm so on my way It's in the air It's in the air There's great excitement here and there The sun is shining everywhere And spring makes everybody Sing, it's in the air. Zoom, 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 high and low. Zoom, 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 here we go. It's in the air. I feel so smart and debonair. And I must warn each lady fair, beware, look out and have a care. It's in the air. back here again in Blackpool and of course you can't come to Blackpool unless you sing one particular song and you all know what it is don't you? Yeah, I'm sure you do it's me little stick of Blackpool rock <laughs> Every year when summer comes round off to the sea I go Now I don't care if I do spend a pound <laughs> I'm rather rash I know To Blackpool Rock Along the promenade I stroll It may 
be sticky, but I never complain. It's nice to have a nibble at it now and again. <laughs> Every day, wherever I stray, the kids all around me flock. One afternoon, the band conductor up on the stand. He somehow lost his bat and it flew out of his hand. So I jumped in his place and then conducted the band with me little stick of black. Randall, and thanks to Robert Stapleton, who did conduct the band with his little stick of Blackpool Rock. Well, now, we're only a short time away from the switching on of the illuminations. You'll hear them on uh, Radio 2 from half past eight, if you can hear lights being switched on. So we have a night of great celebration ahead, but also time for some quiet reflection, too, and no better song to affect that mood than this one, with the world-famous Tower Circus just below us, where we are here in the ballroom. Lindsay Hately sings now from Stephen Sondheim's Little Night Music, Send in the Clowns. Again with 
But a real circus music there from the pen of Julius Fuchik. That was the entry of the gladiators. In previous years for this broadcast, we've actually been in the tour circus itself. And let me tell you, for all of us, the memory of the elephants lingers on. <laughs> Despite dry cleaning. This year, of course, we're in the ballroom, the tower ballroom, here in Sin City, Blackpool itself. Blackpool's been the ruin of many a good man, you know, this flesh pot. And as in life, so in art. In Coronation Street, Alan Bradley met his just desserts under the wheels of a tram and was fined for travelling onto the terminus without a ticket. <laughs> and more recently, Norris Cole fell under the spell of a dancing diva in this very ballroom. So here's your chance to get lucky as Phil Kelsall mounts the mighty well at sir and invites you to take your partners. <laughs> Thank you. 
dancing away with the splendid Phil Kelsall. Now, Lindsay Hakeley and Glyn Kerslake return for their final number tonight from a show which ran and ran and drew big audiences and good reviews, but lost money overall, proving there is no such thing as logic involved in staging a musical. It was Sunset Boulevard, Andrew Lloyd Webber's adaptation of Billy Wilder's classic movie. But if financial health wasn't easily come by, a swatch of memorable songs certainly was, of which this is just one, The Perfect Year. A midnight wish to share with you Your lips are warm, my head is light Were we alive before tonight? I don't need a crowded ballroom Everything I want is here If you're with me, next year will be The perfect year Some dangerous game before we fan some harmless flame. We have to ask if this is wise and if the game is worth the prize with this wine and with this music. How can anything be clear? Let's wait and see This may just be The perfect Glyn Kerslake and Lindsay Hately. Incidentally, if you've enjoyed the organ music you've heard tonight, then you might like to know that the BBC will be back in Blackpool in November for a, a programme of Wurlitzer and Big Band Swing, featuring Lynn Larson and the BBC Big Band, Friday, 24th November, here in the Tower Ballroom in Blackpool. Now, tonight we've featured a number of songs that will always be associated with Fred Astaire, and there's no reason to change that policy as we get towards the close of our show. This time, though, we'll let the orchestra remind us of two of Fred's films, The Bandwagon, with that eternal showbiz theme, That's Entertainment. And first... From the movie Carefree, one for the dancers, and uh, particularly those watching enviously as somebody else takes the lead. Won't you change partners and dance with me? <laughs> Thank you. 
Yes, that was entertainment, and there's much more to come. Richard Allenson takes over in just a moment for the big switch on up the road on the promenade here in Blackpool. But for now, from the Tower Ballroom, on behalf of conductor Robin Stapleton, the BBC Concert Orchestra, leader Cynthia Fleming, guest singers Lindsay Hately and Glyn Kerslake, ukulele virtuoso Alan Randall, and resident organist Phil Kelso. To say nothing of our producer Alan Boyd. This is Ken Bruce saying goodnight, hoping we have proved once and for all that Friday night is music night. <laughs> from the Tower Ballroom. I'm Richard Allenson in Talbot Square. I've got 60,000 people in front of me. I've got about another 50,000 people behind me on the promenade watching this on the big screens. Because this is the big switch on. We're live on Radio 2 for the next hour. And if you want to watch this show tonight, you can log on to the brand new Radio 2 website. The address is www.bbc.co.uk slash Radio 2. Now... On the show tonight, and the countdown to the big switch on, we've got Billy Piper, Paul Carrick, four fantastically talented girls called Bond, The King, and switching on the lights, Westlife. But first, please welcome one of our best, and there's a new record out from these guys. Live on stage, it's Roachford. How you doing? Bloody hell. I'm driving down the motorway and I heard this sound like a party. I don't know who it was. Was it you lot? Sure. <laughs> 